Welcome to the series CyberSec, A Way of Life, brought to you by l and Today and powered by our Tech Solutions. Our leader today is a well-rounded professional with over 20 years of rich industry experience across the industry. Having worked across businesses in publishing, telecom, FMCG to automotive industries, his work has been towards transforming the IT portfolio of the companies he has worked with from planning budgets to creating a roadmap to implementing large-scale IT transformation. He has seen and done it all. He's here with us today to share his insights on the cybersecurity industry and what the industry holds for stakeholders in the future. Please welcome Manzar Rabbas, CIO and Head CSR at Rockman Industries, New Delhi. Hi Manzar, how are you? Thank you so much, Roshan. Thank you for the introduction. And uh, it sounded very big in the introduction, but, uh, you know, what we do is very humble and, you know, uh, we just try to get the integration of technology in the right way, wherein, you know, the value is delivered to the stakeholder and the objective is fulfilled. Absolutely. I think my introduction was uh, yet didn't do uh, justice to what you've been doing over the last two decades. Uh, we'd like to now talk about uh, the cyber security industry, right? A lot has happened uh, from the time the pandemic started. Uh, Manzar, if you can give us an idea of how the cyber security industry was before the pandemic and now almost uh, at the end or the fag end towards of the pandemic. Where, has it been, where was the industry and where has it reached? I wish your last sentence becomes true very soon. <laughs> And we have all been suffering with the fatigue of this pandemic, including right. financial losses and everything. So, see, Roshan, uh, all know it's it's not it's a very common sense that anything which has increased usage has a wear and tear. Right. When when suddenly there were lockdowns in the nation or the rather worldwide, then we these immediately shifted to the virtual way of working, virtual way of, you know, those people who actually started doing that, many of them were actually not uh, cyber uh, you know, professionals or people who were very trained in that. So it went into the hand of children and they were continuously online, right. opening, uh, opening the connect. Then if you see, it is very clear during the pandemic, there was a shift of paradigm in the security way, it no longer remain perimetry. True. So when I say that, then perimetry means, you know, uh, just for the audience uh, who would like to know more, is like within the confines of your organization or your LAN or the data center or the offices, when you come, you plug in, you, you get into the network. And that is what the perimeter is. If you ask any IT profession, they would love people who are working remotely to come to their virtually through the VPN to their data center and then go out. True. Right? Carrying all the security locks and you know measures that is there. But then second, we saw that security is no more perimetric. People are using their own devices, they're using phones, they're using tabs right. to log in, Zoom meeting, do, do uh, Teams meeting, etc. Right. Now, what changed is that security is where the data is. So that is the mantra I always tell my team that boss, build your security, wrap your data into the security, whether the place where the data is stored, when the data is in transit and when the data is in the compute state. It has to be secure all across. Now you have cloud-based, uh, you know, uh, security uh, these days, which are very prevalent. Wherever you log in, you, you are authenticated and you go into that and everything is, applied. you need not even click on the VPN or have those dongles which were there. Right. 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 True. So this is what changed in the pandemic. So right. security now is no more perimetric. Security is where the data is. True. Absolutely. 
Right. Uh, now you did mention of some technologies that you uh, guys have been using in your organization, uh, but technologies like AI, ML, VR, and the likes of it are impacting cybersecurity. Uh, what would you say, Manzar? Are they a boon or are they uh, another issue altogether? I would not say. I would like to take a balanced approach towards seeing the techs. See, tech is always there for the. The intention of creation of tech is always or mostly for the benefits, right? Nobody thinks that you know I'm going to destroy, except you are making a bomb or something, <laughs> right? Nobody, nobody thinks that this is going to be destructive. But this is when it comes to the you know uh, hands of various people. So as per their decision, so I would consider that AI, ML, VR, or that matter AR, etc., are both boon and bane. Both, both. It's not. a boon or it's not a bane it's always a you know roshan it's always a cat and mouse play between hackers and the defenders true true so sometimes they have a step ahead and sometimes the you know defenders have a step ahead so please you know with with this whole changing thing with new algorithms coming in and i think we have recently two days ago uh, what was that um, black cat black cat where was unleashed and uh, it was written in rust that was the first one okay. to come in rust as far as i know so this is what my take from uh, this thing is i think to be afraid of we will be going hand in hand right true now uh, manzil the msme sector plays an important role in india uh, now we all know that you know uh, the mindset of uh, having security protocols in the organization is not very prevalent in uh, the msme sector but uh, owing to the fact of you know the impact that covid is creating of the cyber attackers what do you think msmes can do to protect themselves msme or or the you know uh, players who are small scale industries mm-hmm. they are much part of a supply chain or the value chain right the country of the industry and they are very much exposed into the uh, cyber environment so i would say that uh, a cyber threat to msme who's connected to me is a cyber threat to me right true because it's all the weakest link where the weakest link attack happens there so i would i always suggest my my partner msmes you know that they should join some kind of consortium some kind of board professional body like acma like cii or people who are you know collectively can guide them right. or they should taking advice of a expert consulting team or these days a new trend of hiring a virtual cio has come up which is optimum way or 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 you know i would i would say that it's a cost effective way of getting best advice in less uh, this true Uh, leading on from them, Anzar, uh, cybersec companies are evolving, but so are the attackers. What do you think organizations or security companies must or can do to stay ahead of them? Mm, that's an interesting question. That's an interesting question, and I would say, Roshan, it's not a new question. Right. right. This is a question which we have been asking from. since uh, decades and the cyber revolt we have been asking this question you know uh tech advances or uh, or as it was a uh, 10 years ago and all so attackers were on the similar platform sometimes they are getting a headway like uh, attackers like uh, you know they form some kind of groups consortiums or nowadays uh, it is dark web which is having most of them but see organizations i would say should stay you cannot stay ahead like a organization like me you know my organization is is a auto component automotive organization right, right. i cannot invest into uh, uh, research and development into cyber defend and defend uh, tools and also i i rely uh, people like me rely on mostly on the leading technology companies which are there right. and they have the indies but to stay ahead of them what organization can do is it's a very interesting thing what organization can do 
So organizing you must stick to the basics. Okay. So you see the attack is where the basics are lost. Like you have connected your DR, you have exposed your DR. Like you are not taking backups. So these are very basic and known to everybody. I'm not telling you anything new. Right. Now you take backup, but you don't check your uh, you know backup uh, recovery processes right. oftenly. So when, at the time of attack, when your data is encrypted, then you are you are like in loss. How to recover the data? Because you have never done that. You you don't do DR drills, right? Okay. Or and one most important thing that makes me really happy when my user from the shop floor shouts out, "Hey, this is a mail I got. Uh, do you think it's a it's a phishing attack?" Mm-hmm. I'm the proud person that day because. my all efforts are training my people my team right. across has actually you know reaped the benefit may it not be a cyber attack but okay the awareness that, yeah the awareness awareness training involvement basic things like iso 27001 kind of right. framework or framework in that way right. just follow abide by it and keep your patches your okay i'm just telling one thing which i think we should remember Patches and all. Do you remember? People often forget the free things, which is firmware. <laughs> right. Please, please update your firmware. Yeah. <laughs> okay, True. so that is where the loop is, and people get into it. Get into that. Interesting. Uh, the last question in this uh, section is: uh, uh, Cyber insurance in India is still at a nascent stage. Do you think uh, will it grow, or will it take, or will it have adoption? in uh, organizations going forward from here cyber insurance uh, very relevant questions i have often thought in different organizations of taking cyber insurance but the way the current formula works on the premium of the cyber insurance uh, you know policies is based on the turnover oh all right if i am not wrong if i am not wrong i am not an expert into this field right so and there is always a clause of no cover on the consequential damage okay that is i think the greatest deterrent of organizations made be small big or medium right. to go into cyber insurance because of the sheer cost of it and less responsibility towards you know when the loss occurs i think if that that comes off then i think uh, uh, it should be a hot selling cake cyber insurance should be a hot selling cake So I think the uh, the insurance companies who are providing these services are probably still at a early stages in in this sector and early stages and it's like it's like both ways you know because they are on the early stages they don't find lot of customer base I'm yeah. not saying there no customer base there is a customer base but not as healthy as you know people are buying a antivirus true sure Interesting. Well, thank you, Manzar, for sharing your insights on that bit. Uh, 